and Pilu, which is uh, particle physics. So uh, he, he used to work on the uh, B physics at B factory, I think. And uh, I don't know why he changed to this, uh, for me, quite different field, which is the C CMB and cosmology in particular. Although I imagine he will explain this to us, uh, any connection between this uh, uh, polarization B modes in the, CM in the cosmic microwave background and maybe fundamental physics. Uh, and um, uh, in any case, um, he's the uh, principal investigator of uh, Leibert. Leibert is an experiment uh, which is uh, now in phase A in, in the JAXA uh, Japanese Agency for space. And uh, um, uh, there is also an important uh, contribution that uh, is being studied now from Europe to this satellite, to one of the instruments of this satellite. And here in, in our institute, we are involved in this um, initiative, the European <coughs> Consortium for, for Labour. So we are uh, very happy to have him here, and uh, now he's going to talk uh, about uh, the Labour satellite. Okay, Enrique, thanks for our introduction. I'm going to say a few words about Labour satellite uh, for tests of cosmic inflation in quantum gravity. Uh, the Lightbird uh, joint study group is growing. Now we have around 180 researchers from all over the world. Actually, we have significant European contribution now, uh, among others, I mean, Japan, uh, US, Canada. If you look at actually the fraction, it's, I mean, the, uh, like uh, Japan and Europe are about, you know, we have about the same number of collaborators. So, Today, I'm going to say a few words about this um, uh, light bird. Uh, as introduced, uh, I, my, basically my heart is on the uh, search of fundamental physics. As uh, Enrique already mentioned, I just, uh, before coming here, I just took this photo 20 years ago at the installation of the uh, first silicon vertex detector for the B factory experiment, the KK Bell. Um, so I'm, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm here. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, but uh, about 10 years ago, I formed a new experimental cosmology group to pursue this new uh, exciting theme. And uh, obviously, my background is this on the uh, standard model of particle physics. So let me first give you uh, the big picture I have, and I'm pretty sure that uh, you already heard about something like this, and if you are working on particle physics or cosmology, you are familiar with that, nevertheless. The standard model of particle physics is really, really a tremendous triumph of 20th uh, century physics, and then it's really sort of a uh, exceptional theory without any clear um, the, uh, exceptions. I mean, everything uh, on Earth, all the experiments are <coughs> consistent with the standard model of particle physics. Of course, there are always some tantalizing hints at new physics, but no five sigma clear uh, new physics. I mean, of course, the neutrinos, uh, depending on the uh, definition of your standard model, uh, people used to believe that the neutrino have no mass, and then within that context, of course, you're already observing new physics beyond the standard model in a neutrino setting. But uh, what I'm talking about is something more. So this is really a uh, great theory, and uh, Actually, it has astonishing extra successes like uh, baryon number conservation, anomaly cancellation, etc. are not something built in, but it emerges from the standard model. It's a real extra success. And uh, obviously, many Nobel Prizes were awarded for the development of the standard model. But now, if you look at sky, if you look up at the sky and, uh, and get cosmological data, there are five mysteries. Uh, first of all, this cosmology is now a great um, success in another branch of uh, precision science. But then you see a clear hint 
of physics, we understand that more. The first one is uh, inflation, and second, dark energy, and uh, dark matter, and neutrinos. The fifth one is about anti-antimatter, <coughs> so matter antimatter asymmetry, or antimatter extinction at the early universe. These five things really need uh, something beyond the standard model, so it's mandatory. So we are living in an era where we really have hints from space or from uh, the sky. So one, uh, in order to pursue fundamental physics, one obvious way is to continue looking up um, the sky and um, do even better, more precise measurements. So in, uh, light world is in that context. So it's a post-Planck CMB satellite candidate, and it's on the primor primordial cosmology, uh, focusing on the very beginning of our universe. And at the same time, it pursues fundamental physics. Uh, let me put some more uh, additional information uh, on the first bullet. Uh, Lightbird is a JAXA-led international mission with strong European participation. And uh, it's now in the most advanced status, which is favorite, <coughs> among all post-Planck proposals uh, on the CMB measurements. And it's going to do the uh, CMB polarization sky survey, and roughly speaking, with the precision that's 100 times uh, better than what Planck has achieved for polarization. And talking about primordial cosmology, uh, Lightroom is going to provide a definitive search for signal from cosmic inflation in CMB polarization map. Cosmic inflation is the uh, leading hypothesis we have now in the primordial cosmology, it's in a sense uh, the model before the Big Bang. When I say the Big Bang, when I would define Big Bang as a hot, dense uh, initial state of the universe. Uh, I mean, inflation is talking about something before that. You, you, can, def you can say that it's, it's a sort of a cold universe. Um, temperature, you, can, you can say, arguably, it's temperature zero. It's just the potential you have. Okay. And uh, Lightbrood is going to provide either, uh, well, Lightbrood is going to either make a discovery uh, on inflation or rule out well motivated inflationary models. Either way, it's a very important um, thing, milestone in cosmology. And uh, last, on the last part, uh, on the fundamental physics, uh, Lightbrood is going to give insight into the quantum nature of gravity and other new physics because uh, there are many uh, theories behind this inflation uh, paradigm and each model predicts somewhat different uh, observables. Um, so that's something we can address at Lightbrood. So, uh, as I said already, I have some particle physics background, so just uh, I want to mention how I got excited about CMB B mode, which I'm going to uh, explain a little bit uh, in a minute. Uh, so, it's really about the quantum fluctuation of the metric itself, space itself. You know, in textbooks, a particle physicists learn you know, the quantum fluctuation of particles, and then uh, learn about the quantum fluctuation of particle fields. But here, what we are talking about is the quantum fluctuation of the uh, space itself. So, which is, of course, from the point of view of applying quantum principle to anything you have as physical entity, it's a natural way, it's a natural thing to do. However, nobody has really seen this quantum fluctuation of space. And so, so it's, it's a, in a sense, it's a bit of a jump to me. So it, we really want to observe that. And uh, if you succeed to observe CMB B mode, uh, you can address physics at gut scale. I'm going to explain this new observable R which is an important cosmology parameter, 
And once you can observe CMB B mode and then determine this parameter, uh, this V, this is actually a potential of a new hypothetical particle named inflaton, which is uh, which is responsible for this inflation, the early expansion of the universe, accelerating expansion <coughs> of the universe. And then the minimal theories uh, predict that uh, this potential happens to be around the God scale, of course, depending on this uh, value of R. So this is kind of a coincidence. This is nothing to do with the unification of three forces. If you introduce, say, supersymmetry at the TV scale and then calculate this uh, uh, running of the, uh, um, the uh, uh, coupling constants of three forces, you have this uh, crossing point around the gut scale, which is one of the uh, things uh, people are arguing, uh, people are discussing in particle physics. And this one is nothing to do with that, but yet indicating this gut scale, which is very intriguing. So these three things, or these two things, are really theoretical sort of motivations that I had uh, when I jumped into this CMB science. And the third one is actually there is amazing technology matching with high energy physics experiments and uh, uh, this cosmology, in particular CMB observations. When I jumped in about ten years ago, it was about the time when people we're trying to expand the focal plane array, you know, from 10-ish sensors to like 1,000 sensors. Now people are seriously talking about million sensors on the ground-based experiment. And there, the experience at the particle physics uh, handling of large data is, of course, uh, something you can introduce. And also, the uh, microwave uh, engineering is really common in cosmology, I mean CMB observations, and uh, um, accelerator science, actually. I, I, I actually noticed that the people are really using <coughs> tools, for instance. You can go on and you can mention the uh, cryogenic system, and there are really amazing technology matching. So that's one of the reasons why I really jumped in. Okay, so now let me talk about the mission of uh, LightBird. So, as I said already, uh, this, we have a, a astonishing sort of a precision cosmology now, thanks to many observations, and of course including the Planck observation of the CMB temperature and isotropy. And uh, so we know that the cosmic microwave background, the CMB, is the oldest radiation you can see because before that, you, the universe was in the hot dense plasma state and uh, you couldn't see this uh, light just going uh, straight. It, it, there are so many interactions at that time. So the cosmic microwave background was uh, generated around 400,000 years after the beginning of our universe. And uh, if you zoom in uh, and then talk about before, the CMB generation, uh, you eventually come to this uh, hot big band state. And before that, uh, it's still a kind of mystery. We don't have a sure sort of physics, but uh, one leading hypothesis is inflation, which is an accelerating expansion, enormous accelerating expansion, which could not be realized within the standard model of particle physics. So you need to introduce something and one typical way is to introduce a scalar particle named inflaton. And you have Lagrangian, which is quite similar to Higgs Lagrangian in a sense. And then you can play with the uh, uh, potential so that uh, you can create whatever you like. That's a basic idea. So it's interesting. And the uh, discovery of Higgs really verify that uh, the nature uses this idea of introducing scalar particles. I mean, before the discovery of Higgs, um, I was telling to my theory colleagues, I mean half joking, that uh, you guys always introduce scalar particles when, whenever you have troubles. Is that really 
because nature is like that, or because you guys just have one idea, or, you know. <laughs> but now, Higgs is discovered, so it's really uh, interesting in that sense. I mean, this is, of course, uh, um, not the direct evidence that the inflation exists. But, and, of course, uh, some people are discussing, well, maybe Higgs particle is responsible for inflation as well, that, that, that unified. There are several interesting models, but nothing is conclusive. Right uh, at the moment. Um, then, when you have an enormous expansion, accelerating expansion, um, you expect to have this quantum fluctuation of space time, and, uh, which is almost inevitable. So, then, uh, then that fluctuation was frozen during the course of this accelerating expansion. And that's observed <coughs> as the uh, gravitational wave, okay? Well, uh, some people explain this, that uh, because of this accelerating expansion, once you create gravitons, pairs, you never uh, pair annihilate them. So then, that's, what, that's how this gravitational waves of quantum origin uh, should remain. And Everybody knows this big LIGO discovery awarded, that's a Nobel Prize was awarded last year. And the LIGO discovery is within Einstein's theory of general relativity, whereas what we are talking about, what I'm talking about here, is in a sense beyond Einstein, because this gravitational wave that I'm talking about has a quantum origin. So it's a real big jump. And that's what the light probe is searching for. And, uh, you, you might be wondering, wait, uh, you, you started talking about the cosmic micro background, now you're talking about gravitational wave, what's the relation? Uh, before explaining that, this idea uh, came out around, around um, 20 years ago, and uh, this was a report already uh, 12 years ago, so a famous one, a Wise Committee report, which stated that uh, detecting primordial gravitational waves would be one of the most significant scientific discoveries of all time. So people were well aware of that. And then, so the question is really how, uh, how we measure that? So there, this uh, idea of using uh, cosmic microwave background as a kind of a screen put on the, uh, in the early universe came in. So we're using some cosmic microwave background screen as a detector of the, um, of the gravitational waves. So here's a sort of a um, um, way, uh, the sort of a uh, way to explain that for non-experts actually. Uh, Here's a TV, old TV set, actually. Young people do not understand what this is. This is an <laughs> old TV set. And I was living in Japan in my childhood. Every day, at the end of the day, the uh, National Broadcasting Corporation showed this test pattern. This was to check if your TV set is OK. If your TV set has some problem, you see some distortion, or, you know, some of some pattern which is not uh, correct. <clears throat> if you detect that on screen, you know something about uh, some problem inside. So in that sense, you can get some insight about inside. Okay, this is exactly what we're doing with CMB. CMB, uh, but this time CMB polarization. CMB polarization is. Um, was created 400,000 years before, sorry, after the, uh, our, the beginning of our universe. And inflationary air, era, depending on theory, but uh, typically is like a 10 to the minus 36 seconds after the beginning of our universe, which is, which is, which is much, much, much earlier than the CMB generation time. So if you created that primordial gravitational waves, due to quantum origin, that uh, 
I'm cutting out all the details, but that should have remained uh, after that. It remains even now, here, but I have no way to detect it here. But, you know, at the time of CMB generation, the polarization pattern was affected by this gravitational wave. And that imprinted some specific signal. Actually, it's typically a curl pattern, curl pattern called B mode. Uh, this is just a jargon in our field. But uh, the theoretical prediction is that uh, you have a large scale, the big curl patterns of vortices, if you like, called B mode. And uh, by just by looking at, this is simulation, just by looking at the uh, pattern, it's not easy to see the curl patterns. So what you typically do is um, the, uh, the power spectrum analysis. You define this uh, vertices of B mode, and then you hear the colors show that vorticity in a sense. And then once you have that map, you can get the power spectrum. So, okay, so this is a, a prediction of the inflationary model, and uh, like this. And this horizontal axis shows the multiple moment. Since this is multiple moment um, of your uh, power spectrum analysis, uh, the larger, that means a small angular correlation, lower is a larger angular correlation, <coughs> and the inflation predicts this. And you also have some secondary effect coming from the gravitational lensing. Uh, it's simple to understand that even if at the time of the uh, CMB generation, Suppose you didn't have any curl pattern. Um, later universe created gravitational potentials. And then, um, based on Einstein's general theory of relativity, uh, light is bent by the gravitational potential, just like uh, lenses. So right now here, you observe the universe through that distorted lenses many places. As a result, even if you assume that at the beginning you didn't have any uh, curl pattern, later on you could create some uh, curl pattern as a secondary effect. So now you might ask, then how do you distinguish between the primordial curl pattern and the secondary curl pattern? Fortunately, uh, the angular scale is different. So the shape is different, like shown here. So the inflation predict this pattern, whereas the secondary effect from gravitational lensing is like this. And actually, this secondary effect due to gravitational lensing is already observed. There are three uh, measurements shown here. And actually, it's a polar bear. The red one is one I'm involved in. This is a ground-based uh, CMB observation in Chile. So we do know that we can detect B-mode 